came into your life, they just finished singing that song. Remember what it says in the book of John? He's come to make his abode in us. You didn't come to him. He came and got you. But he's come to live in you. And just listen to those words. I said, wow, that's right. You didn't go find him. He's come into your life, which is now no longer your own. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Melissa came up to me before, and she said how we talked about the blood, she could feel the power of it. That so blessed me because we don't realize how powerful and holy that blood is. It is so powerful, it is so holy, you can't even see sin through it. God never looks at any of us once we've confessed something other than through the blood of His Son. Do you realize that? He doesn't see you. He sees you through that blood. That's how powerful it is. So all of you that got this one and said, Oh God, I got this wrong and that wrong and this wrong. God's going... There's no record. He gave me a vision when I was a young Christian about the power of the blood. Because I hadn't realized I was really truly forgiven from my past life. We'll leave enough said right there. That being said, he started turning all these white pages in a book. And I'm looking. Like I said, he likes to give me pictures. I'm a simple kind of guy. And it's one white page after another. And I'm going, I want to explain this. I'm kind of new at this. <laughs> And he turned me to the scriptures. There is no record of anything I've done. He says, I have no idea what you're talking about. I have no clue what you're asking for forgiveness of. Why are you asking for forgiveness of things when my word says in the Old and the New Testament, I don't keep a record. When the blood of my son washed you, washed you, it washed away everything up to this moment that you had done. There's no record in my book, so I don't know why you're asking for forgiveness. Stop asking God to forgive you for something that there's no record of. <coughs> so much for the opening today. Well, I was laughing this morning. You're going to change it anyway. I come out and wife looked at me. I said, I was laughing. God said, he's going to change everything I studied anyway, so it doesn't really matter anymore. You have your Bibles. 1 Samuel 17 chapter. Lead me to the rock. This message today. When Deborah Simpson made these bulletins, and she shows you David's sling, it's pretty much what it was. They had a pouch on this side. We're going to read about it in a minute. But that rock in his sling, was weapons of warfare. You're going to see what you sling today that that rock is no longer a rock you've got to go pick up. It is the rock who is called Jesus. You put Jesus' name on there. Because when we throw rocks today, we throw the rock of salvation, the rock of creation. You're going to see that in the Word today. But this whole message today is about expectations in your life. Results of your words. What you expect to be. Remember something. Right thinking, right speaking will bring you the blessings of God. The peace of God. The provision of God. The prosperity of God. To prosper in all things, even under your soul, even as your health. Everything in your life should be healed and restored and prospered. So right thinking and right speaking are going to bring the desired results. And the reason your expectations are so low is you don't believe. I didn't say you're not saved. I didn't say you don't believe in Jesus Christ. You don't believe what is written is the infallible truth of God because you've listened to too much stuff. You've got too much stuff between your ears that doesn't line up with this book. That's why God says, meditate on my law day and night. And then you will be like a tree planted by rivers of living water. You'll bear fruit in season. You'll never wither. Think about what God is saying. 
and you'll prosper in the courts of our God. You'll flourish all the days of your life. You will be fresh and flourishing. You will have wings as eagles to run. But if you don't believe that, you won't speak it. Well, I can't pray for the sick. That's for somebody else. Really? I looked in here. It says, all who call upon my name and are saved, these signs, wonders, and miracles will follow you. You will pray for the sick and they will recover. It doesn't say Pastor Dennis or Pastor anybody else in here. It doesn't say only for the special people. Because you're all special. You're all bought with the same blood I'm bought with. You all have the same Holy Spirit I got. It doesn't separate people out in here. He died that we'd be a family of one. When I've been praying for Israel again, lately, the, the visions I keep getting are when he went here, it says in Ephesians, on that window, 2, 14 to 18, he broke the enmity between the Jew and the Gentile, so we become one here. He says, man has separated my Amen. children of Israel from the body of Christ. I never made it that way. I broke down all entity so the two can become one new man. One new man. That word expectation results. A looking forward to an anticipation. A looking for as due, proper, or necessary. A reason or warrant for looking forward to something. A prospect for the future. I've come to prosper you, not to harm you, to give you a hope for the future. So if your expectations aren't in that, then you don't believe what it says. You don't believe that that Bible verse is for every child of God. And then it goes on that word expectation. A reason or warrant looking forward to something and prospering the future of what? Advancement and prosperity. Prosper in all things, even under your health, even as your soul prospers. You don't speak that, those verses, because you don't have an expectation it's going to be. God says what's going to be already is, says that in Isaiah. God's not a man that he can lie, it's true. The degree of probability indicated by statistics. I love that when I was reading that in the dictionary the other day. The probability is God's never lost. He's always been victorious. So your probability, your expectations in the living word of God should always be a victory. It should never be anything else but. It said, when you look up that word expectation, my expectations, the results that I see for my future, are all good. Now, is life going to happen? Are we going to take hits to our heart? Yep. There was a soul sitting here that I could tell you, your life's going to be nothing but a rose garden. Because in a rose garden, there'd be thorns. There'd be thorns. When we used to go pick... Uh, Raspberries and, and blueberries in my uh, what were they raspberries and the blackberries. We had those bushes in my backyard on Long Island. When you go into those, <laughs> make sure you put the, the the gloves on with the long sleeves. Really, I want them now. Make sure you rinse them off before you eat them. Yes, yeah, sure. We got them all pocket and stuff. You're reaching into them bushes. You're coming to the house. There's blood running down your arms, and you got to roll over your face and your shirt. Yeah, I really listened well. <laughs> and then I did it the next year and the next year. So we're slow learners, amen? amen. But boy, was that stuff good. It was growing right in the backyard. Yeah. Oh, God. But my expectation was in something good. Did I suffer a little bit on the way? Yes. But my expectations were good because the ground on Long Island was so fertile because it used to be nothing but farmland. Everything grew back there, and it grew. The grass was so green, it was like when we went up to see her dad, that grass in North Dakota. It was like somebody turned the light on under the soil and poured it up. It was greener than green. It was glowing green. <laughs> Maybe it was all those nuclear missiles in the ground up there in the silos. I don't know. Um, so are those, too. Um, but your expectations, your results of what you speak are what you believe. As a man thinketh and believeth in his heart, the Bible says, so your life will be. When I speak the word of God, I expect it to do exactly everything it said it's going to do. Everything. Because God said it will. Now either I believe God said he's going to honor this book, that he's going to watch over this word and perform it, or I don't. 
And if I don't, I got no business doing what I'm doing up here. But I believe. Because I've seen God do it over and over. See, my expectations are God's got this because I've watched Him for over 23 years of ministry do things faithfully over and over. And every one of you can't look me in the eyes and say, God hasn't been there for you every single time. You may not have gotten the result because people are people. Remember something, if your expectations are in humans, you've already missed it. Because humans will hurt you. Yeah. They will. It's a given. It's a given. In 1 Samuel, <laughs> David and Goliath, this is so good because so much was going on. David was the runt of the litter. His brothers were out hiding on the side of the hill afraid of Goliath. Big mighty men of God they were. With the entire army of Israel, with one man mocking them, defying them, one man come out. Now granted, he was as tall as the ceiling. The armor on him weighed over 500 pounds. The sword that he carried weighed probably five times as much as David. So this guy's big. But you've got an entire army, one guy standing in the valley, because the slopes of the valley they were on were very steep. Everybody says, well, why didn't they come down? No, because whoever came down first and went up this way, you were going to get slaughtered. Like, like in Star Wars, he had the high ground. Um, the thing is, it's so important that you realize when you walk with God, you're on the high ground. Amen. You're on the high ground. Because everything else, he's already put under your feet. And we don't realize that. So David and Goliath, this whole story is, David from his youth was being prepared, like all of you are being prepared, for the days we live in. So everything you're going through is preparation so that you can walk in victory over every circumstance, so that you can be a spiritual doctor to help heal others. The pains in your heart, when you allow God's love to heal you, then you will be effective to help heal others. That's what He came for. He's come into our life, but He's come to live in your heart. Remember something, He's come to live in one organ, here. And if He's in your heart, you will allow Him to heal you this day. All right, expectations. Now, David's the runt. The brothers mocked him. They came against him. What are you doing here? They made fun of him. But David's going, hey, what are you going to do for somebody who takes this guy down that defies the armies of Israel? Really? And Saul said to David, you are not able to go out against the Philistine to fight with him, for you are a youth, and he is a man of war from his youth. How many people including your family, so-called friends have told you, you can't do this, you can't do that, you can't, you can't, you're going to fail. Heard that my whole childhood. From my whole childhood. And you know what, God bless them. Because I believe what this says. My expectations are in, I can do all things through Jesus Christ who strengthens me. Not through human strength or power or abilities. Now right there, they're wrong. Because David knew God. You're going to see that in a second. How well he knew him. Because God was preparing this guy right from the beginning. That's why we look at the size of mountains instead of the size of God. David didn't see mountains. He saw God. Okay, that was verse 33. Verses 36 and 37 in 1 Samuel 17. Your servant has killed... He's talking to Saul, David. Both lion and bear. And this, what? <laughs> David's so cool. This uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them, seeing he has defiled the armies of the living God. Moreover, David said, the Lord has delivered me. The Lord has delivered Amen. me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear. He will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. Don't let anybody, no human, Ever tell you what God can do with you. Amen. Don't you let the words of man ever even hinder your walk with Almighty God. Here's a guy this big. Think about this. He was this big. Goliath's as big as the ceiling. And he's over there, all 105 pounds, dripping wet, going, this uncircumcised Philistine, he's going down. I can't imagine what Saul was thinking, because he was told, looked like a leader, but yet he was, we know what happened to Saul. So looks can be real deceiving, okay? Verse 40, then he took his staff in his hand 
And he chose for himself five smooth stones from the brook and put them in the shepherd's bag in a pouch which he had and his sling was in his hand and he drew near the Philistine. As they say, the rest is history. Because when he came running out to him, what does Goliath say to David? You come out to me as a dog, you run. That's what he was saying. What am I, some dog to you? You come out with me with a sling and a spear, really? And a pouch with rocks in it? There's this man an entire army was afraid of. Here comes Junior. But who did he go out in the name of? The Lord. Because he knew. See, his expectations were already victorious. Because he went out, he said, when you read that chapter, I mean, he took the sheep and the flock out of the lion's mouth. He took it out of the bear's mouth and said, no, you don't slay them. So this Philistine, he's going, yeah, really? God trained me. God trained me. So your size means nothing to me. Your words, like David said, you come to me? Oh, really? I'm going to chop your head off this day. And he did it with his own sword. He picked up a sword that weighed more than he did and chopped the Philistines' head off. And then they had insult the injury to the Philistines. He stuck his head on a pole outside the city. Okay, for everybody to go, wait a minute. Jesus is Lord. I took him down in the name of the Lord. That stone didn't take him down. His expectation in God being victorious over the lion and the bear when he was a little boy in the field brought him down. Because his expectation of victory was built from the time he was in the field. Amen. Your expectation in God should grow day by day by day as you praise Him and thank you for arising in every circumstance because He says everything you're going to face, I've already taken care of. Your expectation should be in God bringing victory and glory into every circumstance because when He does, He gets glorified. Amen. You know when God does signs, wonders, and miracles? He does it so He be glorified. So humanity look up instead of looking out. Never look at a mountain because it's really not there in God's eyes. He's already crushed it under His feet. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. In Psalm 138, you have magnified your word above your name. When David ran out up to that Philistine and said, I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts and He's going to give me your head. He came out in the name of the Lord because the name of the Lord is above the heavens and the earth. His name will be magnified. Amen. Everything that God does to bless you, it magnifies God. Your expectations should be in a Christ-centered life knowing that everything God does in you and through you is so that the Father be glorified through the Son. The Bible says so. Your expectations should always be in God. That's why people say, well, don't you have fear. I walked into the salon the other day, and Bill goes, well, don't you worry. Don't you have these fears. Of, fear of what? 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 What can you fear? God is for me. Who could be against me? Think about what God's telling you in His Word. If He's for you, what can be against you? Because what can be against you has already been defeated. It got defeated at the cross. Amen. Because the name of the Lord is above oh, everything Jesus. coming against you. And the reason things come against you is because you want to walk with the Lord. Steve and I were talking before. <laughs> this week, praying for Israel, life, something, you better believe everything's coming at it's coming at me from every direction. But I keep saying, you know what, to what Jesus said. I'm just repeating Jesus. It is written. It is written. God has risen. And he's overcome the world. And I walk in victory and no defeat in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you have your Bibles, turn to Psalm 61. Oh, hallelujah. David was prepared, and that's what you're happening in your life right now. You are being prepared for a glorious walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. He is raising up a new army that has expectations in God to arise in every circumstance. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Psalm 61, 1 through 4. Now this is when Absalom was chasing David down. <laughs> but David's got a history. You notice one thing about David? When you go back and read the Psalms, you read about David's life, he never cried out to man. Yes. It's not in him. He never cried out to man for deliverance. Never. Never. Why would he? 
His expectations were in God. Amen. Psalm 61, 1 through 4. Hear my cry, O God, attend to my prayer. From the end of the earth I will cry to you. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock which is higher than I. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. For you have been a shelter for me, a strong tower from the enemy. I will abide in you your and in your tabernacle forever. I will trust in the shelter of your wings. In Psalm 91, 15, call upon the Lord and He will answer you. Every time David called upon the Lord, he answered him. His expectation was in God to answer him. Lead me to the rock. Lead me to the rock, O God, that is higher than I. The rock is Christ Jesus, the chief cornerstone which the builders rejected. That's who we go to. Stop going to man for help. Go to God for help. Oh, hallelujah. God overcame the world and everything in it. Uh, John 16, 33. You'll have tribulations. They're going to come. But I've overcome the world. Yeah. Overcome means has subdued everything. Yeah. He has subdued everything in your life under His feet. The reason it gets out from under your shoes is because you let it. Because oh, your expectations aren't something bad to happen instead of something good to happen. Is some, are bad things going to happen in your life? Yes, it is. I told you I'm facing some things right now in my own family, not with us. And it's heartbreaking because I can't do a thing about it. And as a man, you feel like a failure. When you've reached out to somebody for so long and you know you've lost them and you don't know where they're going. As a man, I have to look in the mirror and go, oh my God, what have I done? No, you give it to me. You give it to me. You've carried this for all these years. The last 23 years you've carried this. You give it to me. And I hit a delete button on my phone and I let it go. Now that being said, does that hurt? Yes, it does. But my expectation is to him to reach out, even in somebody's darkest hour, and give them a chance. Because God showed me that when I was first saved. Doctors will pronounce somebody dead, but Jesus is talking to them. He showed me that. He showed me people literally flat minded. Doctors had pronounced them dead, and he was talking, giving them a chance to come home. Remember, the first will be last, the last will be first. He gives you on your last breath and on your last heartbeat. Then Jesus says, okay, you took care of that. Let's talk. Because you're a spirit. You were born a spirit. You'll always be one. So God comes and says, hey, let me talk to you for a minute. Before I let you go, let me show you what you can have. Amen. That's how much God loves us. That's how much God loves the worst of the worst, the least of the least. He loves them all the same. God is love, and that's for every human being walking the face of the earth, and you should love them just the same. Liking them's a tough part, but loving them isn't. <laughs> We're going to come into the, the New Testament. See this? David used this. Wednesday night. And he was going to move it. I said, no, leave it. Leave it. It's for a purpose. When I walked in here this morning, I knew why he said it. Now over here were slings and rocks. Jesus went here. I think it should have ruined it. There's a wedge in here. Oh, that's what you did. Yeah, that's, that's it. Confuse the pastor. There you go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, but now, when he goes there, <coughs> the weaponry changes. The weaponry changes. I don't got to go running into a valley. I don't got to go running back up a hill to take down the enemy. Because what I've been praying about this week, I realized the enemy has already had his wings clipped. The enemy has already been disarmed. Yeah. Because under the new covenant, which you just put in your body today, we have a new rock to throw. I don't need a sling. The sling is your tongue. Oh. That got everybody quiet, didn't it? Amen. That's why the Bible talks about how deadly the tongue is. 
After today, you should be much more careful with your words because they have power. Because that rock and that sling that comes off your tongue is the rock of Christ Jesus from here on out. If you have your Bibles, turn to Ephesians 6. Oh, wait a minute. I missed Psalm 62, didn't I? I'm sorry. Psalm 62, 5 to 7. My soul. Remember David? I don't know how many times he uses that term. My soul. David cried out from inside because that's where he knew God from. David knew God from the inside out, not the outside in. I've come to make my abode in you. Learn God from the inside out, not the outside in. Because everything on the outside is in the flesh. Everything on the inside is of the Spirit. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Watch. My soul waits silently for who? God alone. For my expectation is from Him. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. In God is my salvation and my glory. The rock of my strength and my refuge is in God. See the importance of what David knew. His expectations. It never says, I got all my hope in my armies. <laughs> and he had a massive army that never lost a battle. He always mentions, my hope and my salvation is in my rock. Because salvation is deliverance from darkness and bondage. That's what Amen. it is. Salvation is not just the salvation of your soul. It's the salvation from darkness. It broke its power. It's deliverance. Amen. That's that's why David used the word salvation so much. Because it meant freedom. It meant victory in Jesus' name. Remember something? David was taken into heaven because he talked of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost in the Psalms. So he already knew. He had already seen because he said, My Lord said to my Lord. My God said to my Lord. He already had seen Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. That's why David could say, take not thy Holy Spirit from me. He already knew the triune God. That's why he called on him. He already knew him as creator and savior. He talked about salvation a lot. He knew there was no salvation outside of God, and neither should you. Stop going to man for salvation, because they can't save you. God can. Hallelujah. Mankind. Thank you, Lord. Let's have some church today. In Ephesians 6, let's get back on track here. I was almost right. 10 to 12. The opening, everybody talks about the armor of God, but they forget the first verse in that part of the chapter. Verse 10. It's the most important one before the armor. Because if you have the first one, you already have the armor. If you have this first verse in your heart, and you believe it, and put your hope in it, You'll already have the armor. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Be strong in who? The Lord. If you're strong in the Lord, you're already dressed about. Because your strength is not in you or in the hope in man, but it's in God. If your hope is in his strength. He says in the Psalms, I'll fill you. Think about filling you. Open up your head, pour in the strength of God, the God of all creation, who's walking on those clouds, looking at this earth like it's a baby. All the inhabitants like grasshoppers, Isaiah 40. It's that small to him. He can take all these clouds, it says in the Bible, and wrap them as a curtain around him. That's beyond anything we can possibly imagine. We can't even comprehend that kind of size and power. So when it says, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might, if you go there first, what demon can come near you? Because you're going to say, it is written. No weapons formed against me will prosper. Now go take that somewhere else. You'll be that unimpressed the way David was. David looked at Goliath like, really, are you kidding me? you got a sword, you're, you're big, and so? And, and what's the big deal? 
That's how David looked at him. You uncircumcised Philistine. He was so unimpressed and so disrespectful of the man. I don't know about you, when you see somebody three times, four times your size, he's this massive wall in the middle of a valley, an entire army's afraid of him, and he was like... He did the dentist thing. <laughs> he gave him the dentist look. But think about that. That run went out of the field. He was so unimpressed with the size and the power of a violent, 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 mighty man. He, it didn't even phase him. It never crossed his mind that he wasn't going to take him and chop his head off because his hope was in God. Amen. So when you call people up, you say, I need prayer for this, I need prayer for that, and I need prayer for this. Sometimes you need to. That's what we're here together for as a family. Pick up the phone and pray with one another. It'll help strengthen you. But when it comes right down to it, it is written. It is written. It is written. My expectation is when God said, I watch over my word and I will perform it, he will. He'll do it. It says, come plead your case before me. Put God to the test. And I don't mean run around saying, well, you've got to do this, you've got to do that. You go there and you'll be saying a lot of you got us. And you'll be saying you got us five years from now and it still won't happen. But when stuff comes against you, remember something that's for the testing of your faith, not his. No, I know. Oh, Jesus. When testing comes, because the Bible says you're going to be tested by fiery trials, no less. Not at least the warm jacuzzi stuff. <laughs> Your jacuzzi is when you get to heaven and you're swimming in the river of life. Okay? That's the real jacuzzi. But in here, he says, the fiery trials that are coming for the testing of your faith. What he's testing you is, do you expect God to honor his word, don't you? Amen. The whole body of Christ needs to go back to this book and realize, let's get back on the foundation. Why did he come to seek and to save those that are lost? Everybody's telling stories from the pulpit instead of saying, well, he had to rescue those that are in darkness, folks. We're not here to tell people a dissertation on how much we think we know, because we don't. We don't know. What we know is, Jesus died and he rose again. My expectation is, when I meet people, he's going to give me the right words to tell them. Because every individual you're going to meet, God knows what's in them. He made them, and he'll give you the right words to speak to them. All of you are different, and that's because you're going to reach different people. With me, some people really can't handle this. Because I do get going. Yeah, amen. I am what I am by the grace of God, okay? That's it. You're getting what you get. But so are all of you, though. Who you can reach, who you can reach, who you, you, you can reach. You're going to reach somebody I can. But you're going to get the same word of knowledge I'm going to get because you've got the same spirit of knowledge in you. You those Up on the window, the spirit of knowledge, wisdom, understanding, all that stuff. You already have it. You already have the fullness of God in you who knows all people, knows what's in all people. Don't say, i got to go get somebody. No, God got you to put in their path because he wants to speak through you to touch a soul. Amen. Now stop looking for somebody else to do what you're called to. Get up and get going in Jesus' name. I told you, we can go have some cake today, okay, and celebrate everybody's birthday for this month. But guess what? When you get done here, get out and tell somebody about Jesus. Stop sitting around with who you know. Go out and tell them who you know so their lives can be saved. That's what you're here for. God didn't make you a new creation in His Son, Jesus Christ, so you could come sit here and have a great time. This is to be refreshed, to be renewed, to edify, to build one another. But take the stuff and get out and do something with it. Hallelujah. It's time we as His children got up and put our heads up high and say, take me out today. Let me minister to somebody. Give me the words. Stop looking for other people to do what you're called to do. Yeah, amen. That's why the world isn't changing. All these Christians are waiting for some pastor to get up and tell them what to do. No, the book will tell you what to do. Go out and be my witness. The book will tell you what to do. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Really? Okay. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Remember something? He's a wily little bugger. Yes, he is. Is he defeated? Yes. Yes. But we'll learn his game. Learn his games. You know how you learn his games? When you thank the Lord that you have his mind, his discernment, his understanding of everything that's in front of you. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. 
Listen closely, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against the rules of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. No longer do I got to throw rocks at giants. No longer do I need dynamite to move a mountain. Because I have the same power in me that said, let there be light. I have the same power of His love that said over 2,000 years ago, it is finished. Amen. And the blood of the water came from His side. It washed me, it sealed me, it filled me. With the same love that put His Son there, that's what's come to live within you. The power of that love is in you. You don't let it out because you're like... <laughs> And you're looking around, and you're waiting for somebody else to go do something. I'm telling you, every one of you has the power of that cross in you. Every one of you. The body of Christ is without excuse, folks. We're without excuse. God's taking me out of my comfort zone a little bit right now. All of a sudden, i got people calling. They want me to go do this. They want me to go do that. He's told me don't do anything until I tell you. Now, all of a sudden, I'm getting phone calls. And I'm like, well, wait a minute. I don't trust anybody. I didn't tell you to trust people. I told you to trust me. <laughs> See, when you get when you get nicked, then you get nicked again, and then you get nicked again, then you get nicked again, and now people, your brothers and sisters of Christ, going, "What? Can you come help with this? Can you come do that?" You're doing this. I'm as guilty as anybody because I know what's in people, mainly because I know myself. Okay, so it's so important that when God calls you out, don't look where you've been. Don't look at your past pain. Walk in the power of His love. Walk in the power of forgiveness. Amen. Now, are all these people forgiven? You bet they are. I don't want anything against anybody. I was on the phone with a brother yesterday. We had a great phone call. It was almost like he was excited because I don't, I don't go to the past. I don't have one. And neither do any of you. And neither do they. They don't have a past. Don't hold things against people. People are people. They got shortcomings. They got weaknesses. Not Claudia, but the rest of us do. Good job, Claudia. That's why we got you here. You can laugh because you know that we all got imperfections. When you can laugh at yourself, you know that brings healing? Because now your expectation is not in you any longer. To make yourself into something you can't make yourself into. Stop trying to be a perfect Christian. You're not going to be one. You're not. And neither am I. And anybody tells you who they are, you better start praying for that person right there, right then. Because it's cloudy and there's lightning in storms, okay? Oh, but... <laughs> the day we realize how imperfect we are, the more set free you're going to get, and the more God's love is going to heal you and restore you. Amen. 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 Now they're walking in the Spirit. Mm. Second Corinthians, 10th chapter. Jesus. It'll be like those the, the back hills churches in China to be able to preach it for 20 hours. Amen. You know, they literally hide in caves over there. And when missionaries go over there, they go into these places. And they're up sometimes for two days. These people don't sleep as people bring Bibles and preach the Word because they're so hungry for Christ. Why are we not just as hungry? Amen. We need Him as much as they do. And you know there's a province in China over there that the people are getting saved. Massive salvations. You know what the government's doing? Coming in and taking the crosses off their buildings. Michael Youssef wrote a book about that when the crosses come down. And they're all gone. But let me tell you something. This cross ain't coming down here. They, they're trying to control pastors more than ever now. They're passing more stuff. Well, let me tell them something. I'm sure they're watching. This is the house of God. God rules and reigns. No government reigns. Do I do things legally? You bet we do. That's why we have an accountant and bookkeepers and treasurers. That's why I have triple kits of every law and legal thing we have to do. You bet. 
but I will always proclaim the name of Jesus. No one's ever going to tell me to preach anything Amen. else. And they can't. You can't silence God. They've been trying to silence Him since He made the universe, and they haven't yet, and He won't be in this house or any other house that goes by the name of Jesus. The Constitution says, I have the right to speak His name. So do you. And the people say, well, that offends me. Say, well, then obviously you're not saved. Be blunt. Be bold. This world is perishing. Amen. It's perishing. People are going to hell every day because the church has turned into a church that walks around like this. Oh. No, no, and no. We go out in public. Every time we go out, I make sure people hear the name of Jesus. Sometimes I even extra louder just to make sure they know. <laughs> you know why? Because I love them. They don't have Jesus and they need to have Him. Amen. We should have a heart broken in each and one of us because so many people are not going to heaven because the church doesn't proclaim the name of Jesus except inside of four walls. You don't sing praises. I got people looking at me in the vehicle lately because lately he's had me singing a lot. And I'll have the radio on, that thing's got a nice stereo, and I'm going down the road singing. I had some sheriff over here the other day. He looked at me, I had one of those songs that just got the Holy Ghost going, right? And I was having a good time. He looked up in there, he looked at me, and he made a left. <laughs> he was like, oh, what do we got here? But I was having a good time. I was praying. But you see what I'm saying? Sing unto the Lord a new song. So people think you're crazy. Who cares? Oh, thank you, Jesus. Let them think we're crazy. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> Second Corinthians 10. This is where the walking in the Spirit, under the new covenant, not throwing stones anymore, but throwing the right stone. The stone you throw is the Word of God, the rock of Christ Jesus. 3 to 5 in 2 Corinthians 10. For though we, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not what? War according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but who? Mighty in God. There's mighty in God again. David's in the New Testament too, isn't he? Same words. For pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments in every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. You know why Goliath went down? Because David had a knowledge of God. We have the Holy Ghost. We got God in us. What's our excuse? How dare you walk around saying, well, I got this mountain, I got that mountain, I got this, I got that. Yeah, you know why you got it? Because you spoke it. That's right. You spoke it. Now, like I said, life's going to happen. Trials are going to come. And, and if you commit to this today, you're going to be tested probably before you get home. Because I get hit all week with these things. The negative thoughts. Everything was coming. I'm going, wait a minute. Study. <laughs> but do you see what I'm saying? Amen. He tested me to see how I would respond if I believed I have victory over everything. See, because I'm up here preaching victory over everything. So believe me, some stuff came at me this week. Some heavy duty stuff came at me this week. Yes. And I went, huh. What you study and what you read, what you're reading and hearing today, and you go home and restudy these verses. It's going to come for you. And it's going to see if your expectations are in the living Word of God. The chief cornerstone to do what it said it's going to do. Are you going to throw the stone, the rock of Christ Jesus at it? Or your expectations are going to be, well, you know they said this, and you know they said that, and I heard this report, and I heard this on the news. Right there you've eliminated the power of God to deliver you. Amen. As soon as you put power back in man where it doesn't belong, you've taken his power, you've stuck him in here, and you put him on the shelf and said, okay, that don't matter because what they say matters. No, what well, God says, bless you. What well, God says rules and reigns. Amen. There's nothing above this. It sits above the heavens and the earth. Nothing can even challenge this. People have been challenging this for so long, and not one of them have won yet. Because like I said when we started... Jesus has Amen. never lost a battle. Amen. That's why when I hear people take a, talk about failures in their walk with Christ, no, you drop the ball. So what? That's where you learn wisdom from. When you fall short, the more you fall short, the more you realize He's the one that's going to pick you back up. And you'll stop thinking you fell 
when you drop the ball, you get on your knees. That song, I fall down, we get up. Okay? Everybody thinks Christians got it all together. And then when you make a mistake, they're like this. They start aiming for you. That's your open door to witness to them. You know why? Say, hey, I am far from perfect. God knows it, but God loves me, and I'm saved, and I'm on my way to heaven. How about you? That's how you get them. People go, what do you mean that's an open door? I, when I make a mistake, it's an open door, because when somebody corrects me, I go, wow. Do you know Jesus? Because he says, I'm forgiven. Forgive me for doing whatever I did. Now I'm forgiven, hopefully by you, but I know by him. And I'm on my way to eternal glory. How about yourself? So when people start picking out your short points, like they, David's brothers did, oh, you runt, you this, you fill with pride and everything else. Go back and read that 17th chapter today. Everybody put them down, including Saul, said, you can't. They dressed them with all this armor, and David went, really? I don't need your armor. I can't even move around. It weighs more than me. Get rid of this. Took his staff, took his sling, took some rocks, said, I'll be right back. I'll bring you ahead, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. But do you see what I'm saying? You know why? Because he walked in the power of God. God. His expectations were in God. Our weapons are not carnal. Nothing you do carnally is going to bring you victory. Only spiritually. You're not called to walk a carnal life anymore. That's from the Old Testament back here to the new covenant that you took in your body today. The new body is a spiritual body. Amen. It's not a fleshly body anymore. If you would allow God to take you up into a spiritual realm and walk there, oh God, it's so good in there. Yeah. You've been doing it more and more. I don't like coming out, but then you got to go to the store and stuff, and then you walk to the Walmart, and you're looking for the men in black to come in the doors. Oh, buddy. I was in there the other day, and I just went, oh, really? Oh. And if any of you like me, you'll be smart. You won't go neither on the first or the second. I don't even think about getting out of bed and going. The other day I almost got up and went to Walmart. God goes, it's the first of the month. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Well, he reminded me I was going to go get a few things, but I'd just been chopping, so we really didn't have a need for anything. They just wanted to get up and go out. He wanted me home praying. He said, it's the first of the month. See what I mean about the thought thing? Oh, you need some stuff from the store. And then it was like, no, I don't really. I kind of think, well, I really, I don't. And then it was like, it's the first of the month. <sighs> he already knew. <laughs> he already knew you don't go there. He was protecting me. So the next time God says no, there's a reason. Mm -mm. All right, let's move it along. Almost done. 1 Peter 2. This is what I talked about in this sling in your bulletin today. That rock. You're going to see the rock that you're supposed to throw. You're going to see the rock. Because just put Jesus' name on that rock. The living word. The rock is the living word. The living word is the foundation upon which we're built. The foundation is the living word which saved us and set us free from the powers of darkness. The living word is the Holy Spirit. It is the rock. It is the door. It is the shepherd. It is the healer. It is the provider. It is all those things in one big rock. Because once your foundation is in and for the rock, and you allow the rock to come off your tongue, you will walk up... Because everything I speak, I believe that He gives me to speak will come to pass. You know why? Because He said it. My expectation is in him to back up his word. When God says, I'll watch over my word, and I will perform it, I believe him. Because I've seen it for 23 years, and so have all of you. How quickly we forget how much God has done for us. How many times he's provided when you said, oh, I'm never going to make it. Oh, this isn't going to happen. Stop saying I'm never going to make it. Stop saying I can't. Because in Jesus Christ, yes, you can. Because there's no I can't in God. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Verses 4 to 8, 1 Peter, 2nd chapter. Coming to him as to what? A living stone, rejected indeed by men, but chosen by God and precious. Here you go, folks. This is you. You also a living stones. Your living stones are being built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, 
to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through who? Jesus Christ. Therefore, it is also contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he who believes on him will by no means be put to shame. Amen. Therefore, to you who believe, he is precious, but to those who are disobedient, the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone, a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. When you speak in public of the Lord Jesus Christ, people will be offended. This whole town is being changed. Yeah. You know why? Because God promised me it would. I trust Him. We were leaving the nugget last week. Mm -hmm. My wife and I were at the counter paying the bill. That's a warning to all of you. You be careful of your words. There was five of the ladies that worked at the nugget there. They were all asking me about church and stuff. Some of them wish they could have Sundays off so they could go to a church. I gave them one on a card. I said, hey, go watch it on YouTube. What? But one of them, who was just talking about Jesus Christ, said something about someone. And the words came out of my mouth before I could stop it. Her knowing I'm a pastor. She's saying she's a Christian. But yet she had judgments against someone because of where they had been. I had that for so many years. You used to. I said, no, that person I used to be used to do. The new creation don't. Thank you, Jesus. But I said, you know, you know what I've been preaching for over 23 years? God forgives our sins and doesn't remember them. And everybody there froze. It was a divine appointment and a moment's time to change that whole work staff. They love us there anyway. We're good to them. We're respectful. We treat them kindly. We pray for them. We're good to them. They're good to us. But when I heard that, the words came up and out of God's spirit, not mine, so fast. I reminded her that God doesn't keep a record of sins, nor what we've done. And all the other women looked right at me, and they just smiled. The one says, uh, uh, I said, here's my card. She was going home to turn on YouTube. Awesome. Remember something, what you say about somebody. Don't you dare hold anything against anybody because they haven't done it in God's eyes. That woman was asking me about the ministry in Jesus Christ and then she's turning around to judge someone. No, no, and no. That's not allowed here. Because I checked this morning. I'm far from perfect and so are all of you. Well, like I said, Claudia, that's why she has her own chair. But um, <laughs> <laughs> the, the thing is, though, remember something. She said that and everybody heard it. They heard judgment. We're talking about Jesus Christ, the saving grace of the cross, and I heard judgment. It can't be. I'm sure when I walk in there today, I'm probably going to get the eyeballs, but that's okay. <laughs> um, because the rock of offense, you know, you know what that means? They get convicted. Yeah. They get convicted. That's what, you know what it means? They get that much closer to surrendering to Jesus Christ. Yeah. Hey, Amen. They're getting that much closer. They're giving their hearts to God so that they never judge another soul. Because I've looked in here, it doesn't say I'm allowed to judge anyone. Because if I do, it's going to be measured right back. I don't know about any of you, but I've been forgiven much, okay? The woman at his feet, he says, you don't even give me a glass of water. She loves much because she's been forgiven much. What a rebuke to Peter that day. Oh, buddy. In Matthew 16, don't even go there, 13 to 20, Jesus tells Peter, upon this rock I will build my church. That's where they got the whole Pope thing, but it means no such thing. Um, the thing is, Peter is Petros, pebble. He was no rock. The rock is the foundation, which is what's in your lap. It's the living word of God. The foundation is the teachings. Of Christ Jesus. That's the rock upon which we're built. That's the rock that came to live within you. Amen. So don't sit there. The church is built on one thing. We're the church. You're built on this. You're not built on a piece of concrete. You're built on a rock that cannot be moved, cannot be shaken. The eternal rock of Christ Jesus. That's what you're built on. That's what lives in you. So when he says, Peter, upon this rock, he's talking about the gospel of salvation through Jesus Christ. That's what he's talking about. Because Peter was no church. He was no folk. And when we get to heaven, 
He's going to have the same crowns we got. He's going to be dressed in glory. He's going to be worshiping Jesus. He's probably still falling at his feet. Because that's what we do when we're up there. Been there, seen it, done that. Well, let me tell you something. That glorious day is coming. Well, let me tell you something. God wants this world saved. Make your prayers bigger. And you're right. When we get a new building, I want a bigger sign. I want one about ten letters high that says pray big. Stop praying for little things and start praying that God change this whole world. We can start here in Peron. But let Trump be so lit up with the gospel of hope and salvation in Jesus Christ that the world comes here to get touched by Jesus. Amen. You should have people chasing you down to have what you have. Amen. But they don't because you wait for somebody else to go tell them about Jesus. Right. Oh, hallelujah. You got me fired up today, don't you? This is a big warning right here. Now, I want you to throw in the stone, but the throne is made for darkness, not people. What I heard last week was that a person. No. And no and no. You don't throw stones at people. Mm. Proverbs 18, 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And you leave the fruit of it. You start throwing this thr stone at people, it's going to come for you. Our weapons against spiritual forces and darkness as a hold of people's souls, not against people. Not against people. It's what has that person that makes them miserable. It's not the person. God didn't make them miserable. The devil did. We need to pray for their deliverance. Send the rock of salvation to them to soften their hard heart so they can get delivered from darkness and walk in light. Don't you dare speak this against people. God will do that all by himself. It's his vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. All the wicked in our government, they're being dealt with right now. That's why I keep praying for salvation of every one of them. Because if our government ever got saved, oh God, this country would go back to a glorified place. He'd heal the land, he'd clean the pollution out, and everything else if we'd only humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God. But that's not going to happen, and still we start praying the rock of salvation fall on people. Not cursing people, we're not here for that. In John 8, we'll finish here. Last night, actually it was yesterday afternoon, I was taking a shower and he gave me this to close with. I, thought I had a whole different closing for this sermon today. And that verse in Proverbs, and this we're going to go over right now, took out the closing and he put this in. He got us all fired up. I got the rock in me. I can speak the rock at the devil. It is written. It's all that stuff. He says, now warn them about their tongue. John 8, 1 to 11, verses 6 and 7. Everybody knows this story. They set Jesus up and they set the woman up. Because anybody caught in adultery, they not only stoned the woman, they stoned the man. That means it was probably one of the priests that were with the woman. Yeah, I bet it was, because they was all leading a double life, every single one of them. And the ones that weren't followed Jesus. How about that? They didn't say so. They didn't want to get kicked out of the synagogue. That's okay. They knew the Lord. This they said testing him, because they kept bugging him about the adultery. They were testing God. Really? Thank you, Jesus. That they might have something of which to accuse him. David's brothers accused him. Why are you here? Just for yourself? No, Jesus came here not to be accused, but to save us all. But Jesus stooped down on the ground with his finger as though he did not hear. You know, everybody's got stories on that. I think maybe one of the ones that were with the woman, he was probably writing his name out. <laughs> oh, buddy, I'm leaving now. <clears throat> so when they continued asking him, he raised himself up and said to them, He who is without sin among you, let him throw a stone at her first. Don't be a stone thrower, people. You don't have the right. Neither do I. Jesus does. You know what he throws at people? Love. 
when you throw the stone, you throw it to the principalities and powers of darkness, and you crush them under, the, under your feet where they belong. You don't throw this word at people. I was preaching in Heritage many years ago, and I got when I was up there ministering, I actually got a vision of it. I saw Jesus in all his glory, and he put his hands on us right in the middle of the ministering up there. And he showed me his hands. And it's, I'm the only one allowed to throw stones, and I don't. Be careful with your tongue. That broke God's heart last week. I know it broke mine. We don't have that right. We are blood blood children of God. We have been forgiven much. We don't have the right. If a person's in prison, send the word to them to deliver them from all their destructions and heal them. Psalm 107, 20. That's sending the rock of salvation to them to redeem them, to save them, to heal them, to comfort them, to give them hope and a future in Christ. Be careful with your tongue. Our tongue is a weapon against darkness, not against people. Remember some people are not evil. It's what gets a hold of their soul that makes them evil. Like I said, you didn't see me 24 years ago because you would only, then you would really know God can do anything. You would. If you would have saw me 24 years ago, you would know that there's nothing impossible for God. There's not a soul that's not redeemable and usable by God if you would have saw me 24 years ago. I was resident evil personified. I was that bad. But guess what? I was redeemed. I was saved. I was set free. And so have all of you. Maybe you didn't have that darkness in your life, but you all had darkness. You all walked in your sinful nature. You all satisfied your selfish desires. Every single one of us does. So be careful with your tongue from now on. Because you're going to be held accountable to it. Like I said, that broke God's heart last week. I could feel it. It affected me the whole night. It affected this teaching today. Because yesterday when I was in the shower, he reminded me of that to change the ending. I've given you the rock to throw. But it's not against people. It's against darkness. Remember something, your words can do two things. It can curse and condemn a person, or it can bring the hope of Jesus Christ to them and life eternal. You have the power in you to do that. Do you realize that? I told you when God redeemed me, I'd been cursed my whole life by my own family, by everybody around me. I was told things about me that I actually believed. Then he sent love. And I stand before you today, a forgiven man. So are you. You speak the rock of salvation over people's lives and you stop looking at people and you start seeing them the way God does and then people are going to start getting saved. They're going to start getting healed. I guarantee it's different when we walk in there today. Because they was all talking when we left. But you know what? Yeah, it's so powerful. Our words. She said something in front of a lot of people. We're talking about Jesus. We're talking about God. We're talking about salvation and holiness and righteousness. And then a word of judgment came out and unforgiveness. And I went, oh, no, you don't. And a brother and sister comes up to you and says, they don't forgive somebody, you correct them. Because the Bible says you're not forgiven. to love because you're still looking back. So many of you have come up here for prayer and I've prayed over you. I put my hand behind your back. I said, it's, it's not here anymore. It's not here anymore. It's not here anymore. You don't go out and love again because what was behind you is still there. It's still there pulling you this way instead of that way. Remember something? Jesus put the cross before him. That was his destination. But that was a stopover back to the right hand of the Father, just like us. Because that's where we started. We didn't start here on earth. The whole game was written up there. Our whole life's plan was written up there. Everything was designed up there. You didn't start with your mother and father. You started before there was any stars and sun and moon and earth that you need here. 
There were no fish and birds and animals when your life really began. It began in heaven before he made everything. He made everything like we talked about, and it was good. God made us to be good, decent, and integrity people, honest people, holy people, righteous people, but you can't do it in and of yourself. But don't walk out of here and be afraid of love. And if you say, well, it happened back here, then you've probably got unforgiveness and bitterness towards somebody and you need to let go of it. Because you're not going to go out and share the love of Jesus unless you walk as a forgiven vessel. And you've let go of what's behind you. Because if you're afraid to love again, you'll never be effective for Jesus Christ. I can't be afraid to love again. Even lately, this point my friend I talked about this morning, maybe I'm a little hesitant. Now, I'm getting some calls to go do, and I'm kind of like doing this a little bit. I'm going, I get issues, don't I? <laughs> yeah, you do. It isn't that you haven't forgiven. You're just weary of it and not so trusting. But I trust Jesus. I trust Jesus because nothing can stop what God's going to do with you but you. You're the only one that's going to stop God's work in your life. It says your gifts and your calling are irrevocable. Nothing can steal the calling that's inside of me. The only one that can ruin that is me. But I got God on one shoulder, I got her on the other, like I'm going somewhere, right? Yeah, sure. <laughs> and now she's coming into her own, so I'm really in trouble. Whoa, buddy. Whoa. So, that being said, it's a check and balance thing. You got Jesus, He loves you. You need to get rid of all your fears today, but what you need to get rid of, you need to leave your past here, or you're not going to love the way Jesus loves. Could you imagine if Jesus stopped loving you just because you did something wrong this morning? You yelled at the dog or something, and you yelled at the kids, or you yelled at your husband or wife or something, and you sinned or something and said some foul language. Could you imagine, he goes, okay, I'm done loving you. I'm not going to love anybody anymore. Could you imagine if Jesus did that to humanity? We're, we're gone. We're not here anymore. Don't be afraid of love. I'm not saying run out here and hug everybody because there's a lot of people you really probably shouldn't be hugging. They ain't going to hug you back. Use wisdom. But love them. Love them. We need to stop doing what we're doing. And what we're doing is, is we're not being a witness for Jesus Christ because we're not loving. And you're not loving because you're too busy throwing stones. I heard it last Sunday. You let God touch your heart today. You put your expectations in Him to heal you and to love you and to remove your past and leave it buried. Stop resurrecting your past. The only thing that was resurrected was the Son of the living God so that we could have a blessed life in Him. He's come, like that song says, He's come to us. He's come to us. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. <coughs> Get quiet at the end, did not it? I know I'm long-winded. I can't help it. Oh, really? <laughs> well, we love that one. Like I said, there's so much on there we didn't even talk about. There's so much to the kingdom of God that we don't even enter into because we're afraid of it. There isn't a Christian on this earth that should walk in fear of anything. Because if you have fear, your expectations is in God. It's not in God, it's in man. You think man's powerful. Man ain't nothing. When you get to heaven, and David's over there, and he's still dancing, because that's what he did. After every battle, he came back in dancing down the streets. The wife didn't like that much. You know what David said to his wife? Don't really care what you think. I'm God's anointed. Amen. You shouldn't be dancing like that in public. Why not? I'm God's anointed. So if people come, you shouldn't be doing that. Say, I'm bought with the blood and I'm God's anointed. God bless you. I love you. But I don't really care what you think. <laughs> I mean, you could say that in a nice way. Because you're not, you're not, you should never be a people pleaser. Galatians 1.10. Be a God pleaser. Amen. And once you're a God ple pleaser again, because too many people aren't anymore, when you go out here, you won't be afraid to love people. Because He'll guard your heart. He'll show you how to guard your heart. 
You'll stop going home, oh, I'm going to get hurt again. If you confess that, that's what will happen. You've opened the door to more pain. Pain that God never designed for you. Amen? Amen. Heavenly Father, we come before you in that name. There is no other name by which men can be saved but the name of Jesus. And I lift up the name of Jesus not only over Perón, but over America. From the north to the south pole, from the east to the west. I lift up the mighty name of Jesus above the heavens and the earth. And I send the rock of creation and salvation upon every soul on this planet. Lord, there's over 7 billion people. You know them all. Touch them all to open up their hearts to you, the living God. You are the way, the truth, and the life, Lord Jesus. No one comes unto the Father but through thee, O oh God. We thank you that your salvation is falling on every heart on this planet, turning people from darkness to light. You're crushing the lies of every false religion. Every demonic spirit is being exposed so people see light and darkness, and they choose light and not darkness. Oh, God, change us to be more like you. Lord, we have the power of your love in us. Take out every fear, every doubt, every insecurity. We'll be rejected, we'll be slandered, whatever it is in any vessel in this house. Remove it right now. Show them that you will guard their heart. That you, God, are our armor. And that you won't let anything hinder us or even slow us down when we commit our hearts, minds, souls, and strength to you. Lord Jesus, come. Come and touch everybody in here. Smile upon every vessel. Comfort every vessel. And Lord, I pray for emotional healing today. Not just physical, but heal them from the inside out, which trouble their souls and hearts and minds. These burdens that they have inside of them, they feel like they didn't do enough, they did too much. They need to turn everything over to you right now, Father, in the holy and the mighty name of Jesus. I pray the power of your grace on every chain that's on every vessel in this building right now, that it be broken. You've come to set us free, Lord God, so that we can walk as new creations in Christ Jesus, your Son. Father, bless these people. Comfort them. God, wrap your arms around everybody in this house and show them the power of thy love to heal what's ever hurt them. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 If you keep looking at it, it's going to keep hurting you. You've acknowledged the hurt and not the healer. Think about what God just told you. If you're looking at it, if you're looking at it, you're giving power to pain. The healer can't love and heal. You're giving it an authority in your life to hurt you when it doesn't have one. Don't give your past any authority because it doesn't have any. How is Jesus going to come and love and heal and restore you when you're given what was power? It has no power. You know why? The cross of Christ Jesus. There's no, nothing can rise up against this. There's an immeasurable love here that we don't even understand. We'll get it when we get home to heaven. But don't let what was rob you of your hope and your future in Christ Jesus. Throw stones, the living word of God, at darkness, not people. Then your life will change. Your circumstances will change. Throw the rock of Christ Jesus at your past so you don't have one anymore. So that your hope is here. If we don't focus here on Christ Jesus, you're going to focus on what was and it's always going to pull you down. You're going to have pain in your life that God took care of over 2,000 years ago. Let Him love you. Let Him heal you today. He cherishes you. Let Him. Remember some of His love's unconditional. He's not going to come put His arm around you today and say, here, let me give you a list of stuff you've got to do first. That's not Jesus. He wouldn't have come to the cross if that was His heart. The Father's heart is that you be saved and healed and whole and blessed and prospered and walking with the joy of the Lord in your heart, mind, body, and soul. He's come to restore an abundant life to you as only He can give you. Don't look outside these doors for Him. 
you look to the one who died and rose again. Amen? Amen. Be blessed. Anybody need prayer for anything? That's what we're here for. And have